Praise God. Welcome to this hour with Kingdom Church House of Prayer, Dolores Johnson, pastor, and, and we're delighted to have you with us. We're located at 2401V Dawson Road. Uh, we meet every Sunday at 1130. We're live. You're welcome to come on Wednesday nights. We are on a conference line as well as Monday through Fridays at 11 a.m. We're on a conference line for the prayer line Wednesday nights. We start promptly at 7. The conference line is 267-930-4000. The special code is for 11510551. Praise God. We're so delighted to have you with us. I'm just so, um, just so delighted to read from St. John. This particular book was written by the youngest disciple, the book of St. John, the one that uh, Jesus loved. Of course, he loved all of them. But when John wrote about it, he said the disciple that Jesus loved. And he gives a powerful message. He introduces us to these 21 chapters to the Father. He introduces us to the Holy Spirit. None of the other books of the Gospels uh, introduce us to the Holy Spirit the way John does. And so we're just so blessed to be learning from the book of John. And we're going to just uh, take a thematic approach, and we're going to talk about some of the themes in this very first chapter. We're going to start with uh, the Word of God, the integrity of the Word of God. The very first verse in chapter 1 of St. John says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we're just excited about the integrity of the word of God. It, it, it will not fail. It will stand even uh, when everything else does not stand. And there's so many scriptures that will just confirm that. Um, we can't do anything without the word of God. And later on in chapter one, it's going to really bring out why God is the word. Uh, Jesus Christ is the word that became flesh. And so we understand why John began that chapter by saying, in the beginning was the word, because the, wor the world was framed by the spoken word of God. And whether we are talking about the logos or the rhema, the word of God is powerful, powerful than any two-edged sword, more powerful than any two-edged sword, and, and uh, it rightly divides. And so we can't begin to devalue the word of God. We make a, a, a dreadful mistake when we don't understand the seriousness of standing on the word of God. Is there anything stronger than standing on the words of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Like we said, Jesus Christ is the word. He became flesh and he dwelt among men. So we're just uh, going to highlight some special points that are brought out concerning the Word of God. Proverbs 18 and 21 talks about life and death being in the power of the tongue as words are being spoken. We want to bring out the fact that words have creative power, whether they're good words or bad words. We have to be very careful. We can speak the wrong thing too long, and before we know it, something is about to be created that has no value, that uh, has no power, that can bring harm to ourselves or harm to someone else. We must be responsible for the words that come out of our mouth. But if we speak the word of God, we, we speak safety, we speak security, we speak righteousness, we speak love, we speak uh, joy. And those are good words, and those are words that will benefit ourselves and they'll benefit everybody else. So we need to concentrate and focus on speaking the word of God, agreeing with the word of God. There are a lot of words out there. Sometimes parents are responsible uh, for, for, uh, really 
creating a situation with their children where they be, began to go, I'll just say to the left. They began to do things that are not right. But we've spoken over the years that this is a bad child and this child does this and this child does that. We, you know, we're not complimenting the child. We're not talking about the greatness of the child. And sometimes God wants you to call those things that be not as though they were, even though you see the child uh, getting into trouble from time to time. You pray against it. You ask God about it. You pray for that child. You don't begin to speak all of the negative that you see and allow God to uh, cultivate that child. Allow God to impart himself into that child as you pray, as you tell the child about Jesus. You know, we spend a lot of time and it's valuable time. And I compliment you. We sent our children to school. I sent my children to school. We, uh, uh, we will not allow them to just stay home and not learn. And that's a powerful thing. And, 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 and you to be, you know, commend it for that. And I thank God that he gave me the mind to ensure that the children would go to school every day and learn. I thank my parents for sending me. But that is a school that is more valuable even uh, uh, than the everyday school that we participate in. Our edu educational system, a wonderful place to be. That is teaching the children the word of God. That is giving the children a Christian foundation. That's a stronger school. In fact, the Christian school is going to help every child do better in the, uh, the educational school. It's going to uh, give them a better future. They'll have the mind to comprehend even better and quicker. I mean, that's been measured. Uh, uh, research has been done on that. So we need to do a great service for our children. We need to tell them about Jesus Christ and commit to not calling them names. And even though sometimes we're disappointed at the choices that they make, no matter how they grow up, even when they get older, all oh, begin to call them what God has put in your heart about their greatness Begin to declare that they're going to fulfill their destiny. Begin to declare that they're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going out, blessed coming in. Begin to declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, no evil shall befall them, neither shall any plague come now their dwelling. Begin to say, oh, one day they're going to love to be in the house of the Lord because what does the promise say? It says if you rear a child, if you raise up a child, in a way that child should go. When that child is old, that child will fulfill that scripture, what you have spoken. It will not. That child will not depart from that rearing. You've taken the time and you've told that child about Jesus. It may take some time, but they're not going to depart from it. So we want to just celebrate that uh, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We want to celebrate Psalms 119, the longest psalm in the Bible, because it celebrates the word of God. The word of God, again, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The word will not return void, Isaiah 55 and 11 says the word of God is spirit and it is life in the book of John. The word of God is a hammer. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1 and 14. So when we think about the word of God, that's a careful place to be. Since words are creative and words can hurt and words can, can, can cut people down and words can even, even murder. Words are, can be very effective. They're creative. You think you're just speaking something in the atmosphere. No, you're forming a thing. Then let it be the word of God. Let's be like Jesus. Remember he said, I speak what my father tells me to speak. I do what my father tells me to do. Jesus did not have idle words. Sometimes we just say things to make other people comfortable. But God wants us to speak. His word. It is a solid foundation. It is a careful place to be. It is the best place to be when it comes to creative power. Meditate on the word day and night. 
Psalms 1 says, uh, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the word of God. In that word, he wants us to meditate. The Lord spoke through David. Meditate on that word day and night, and you're going to be, not maybe, not if, you're going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in a season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. Help me celebrate the power and the integrity of the word of God. We're delighted in, in, in Mark 4 and 20. I love to read Mark 4 because it's a picture of the parable of the sower. And God lets us know the value of the word, the strength of the word, and how to get it in our hearts. He talks about uh, the sower that's planting and the seed does not go down deep enough sometimes spiritually. Uh, 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 circumstances and situations, sometimes the storms of life, the sun gets too hot. This is just an analogy that is used in this parable, Mark 4. Take your time and read it. And it's going to burn up that word that you received. You received a prophetic word from the Lord. You get all excited. Oh, I'm going to plant this word in my heart. I'm going to write it down. Oh, this is so valuable. This is where I'm going in my future. This has to do with my destiny. But if it's not planted down deep, we have an enemy that comes to try to uproot that word. And God says he gives us wisdom. He gives us knowledge. He gives us understanding. That word's got to go down deep. I mean, it's going to have to be buried in our hearts. The circumstances cannot take it away from us that the sun being too hot cannot burn it up. And so I want you to remember how valuable the word of God is. And when you receive a word or you study a word and you know that word is for you, I want you to take your time and I want you to allow that word to go deeply into your heart by studying, by speaking, by meditating on the word of God, by writing it over and over, by memorizing it. Joshua 1 and 8 tells us the power of meditating on the word of God. Joshua says if he were here doing a, a seminar today, he'd let us know the way to uh, have great success is to meditate on the word of God day and night. Now, you know, I believe the Bible is literal. A lot of us meditate in the mornings, but Joshua said the spirit of the Lord told him it has to be day and night. And then he said, you're going to have good success. You know, I believe that. I believe that. So there are some days I'm tired and I don't get back to it at night. You know, there are some days I get up in a hurry and I'm running here and I'm running there and I may not get my meditation in first thing in the morning. That's not a good way to start your day, you know, because we need to have our shield and our buckle and our high tower with us, over us, the blood of Jesus covering us, Psalms 91 covering us. And we do that by meditating on the word of God. And so Joshua said, if you do it morning and night, then you're going to have great success. And meditation is more than reading. Oh, let's celebrate the integrity of the word of God tonight. We have a deep secret. We have a way out that sometimes the world does not know about. Oh, the word of God can change situations. The word of God can call things that we don't expect to happen to happen when it is the perfect will of God. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. Forever settled in heaven. Lord, help us uh, put that in our hearts. That's why we don't worry and fear. Because God says, we do not have the spirit of fear. We have power, love, and a sound mind. And we choose to believe the word of God. Let us just pray tonight, and we're going to ask God to give us a respect, help us to honor, help us to cherish his word. It will not, the word of God will not return void. 
May the Lord bless and keep us. May he cause his face to shine upon us. May he lift up his countenance unto us and grant us his peace. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the anointed one. Amen.